Hi viewers, so today's lecture is the first lecture in our rock and mineral series. The topic of today's lecture is minerals in our daily life. This discussion is focused on non-metallic or industrial minerals which are the backbone of manufacturing industry and for the development of a country. You can see that industrial minerals are used in many as different aspects of our life. Since morning till evening we come across industrial minerals and their products. The industrial minerals are used in the construction industry, paint industry, plastic industry, rubber industry, food and feed industry, etc., etc. So, today's discussion, I like to mention that today's discussion is an introductory and very general discussion. I would like to give you some idea of what are industrial minerals, how they are used in our daily life and industrial applications. Do we need any treatment of minerals? prior to the use. Is the same mineral can be used in all different industrial products with the same treatment or we have to treat them, we have to process them in a different manner to achieve different levels of purity or different for the different products. In this discussion, is this discussion useful for you? Actually, these slides or this, these lectures are designed for geologists, minerals, mining and civil engineers, mineral and mining entrepreneurs, mineral traders, quarry operators, project managers, students of science and engineering, chemists and chemical engineers people in glass, ceramics, cement, paint, healthcare, food, feed industries, people with pharmaceutical industries or any other people who are interested. What can you see and when can you see next video in this series? My videos will be focused on interesting topics for everyone like geology, minerals and rocks, industrial products for minerals such as cement, ceramics, glass, fiberglass, paint, pharmaceutical, food and feed. High tech mineral products such as silicon metal, silicon, solar grade silicon, silicones, minerals used in solar energy harvesting, transportation and storage. Minerals used in LED industry, precipitated silica and its use. Precipitated silica is very interesting, it is made from ordinary silica sand, but it is used in hundreds and thousands of different products. Silicon carbide and its use and many other products. Every Monday and Thursday you can watch and listen a new video in English language. And every Tuesday and Friday, you can watch the same video in Urdu language. The videos will be presented in English, but the explanation and discussion will be in Urdu language. There are two main group of minerals. Number one, metallic minerals. So, these metallic minerals are the source of metals like iron, copper, gold, lead, zinc, etc. They are high value, low volume minerals and metallic minerals are extracted for their metal content. On the other hand, second group which we will focus in many, most of the lectures is non-metallic or industrial minerals. These minerals are generally exploited for their physical properties with some exceptions. Industrial minerals are low value, high volume. Our discussion is focused on non-metallic and industrial minerals. So, we will not discuss 
gold, silver, copper, etc. We will discuss those minerals which we use in daily life, in our food, in our feed, in construction, in cement, in ceramic, in glass, in fiberglass. So, industrial minerals are very important in our daily life. Industrial minerals are important for the development of a country. Industrial minerals are used as a raw material for industrial products and manufacturing. Let us define a mineral. What is a mineral? A mineral is a naturally occurring in organic crystalline solid. So, first of all it is naturally occurring. It means if a mineral is mineral is synthesized in the laboratory, if a compound is synthesized in the laboratory, it is not classified as mineral. It is inorganic. So, the minerals are not organic. They are crystalline. What does crystalline means? Crystalline means that their internal structure is made up of well arranged uh, atoms. The atomic arrangement is well arranged. The atomic arrangement is geometrical in their crystal structure. Crystalline does not mean that their outer shape is like a crystal. No, it cannot be a crystal, but inside the atoms are arranged in a particular manner. So, those are called crystalline and they are solid. It means the minerals are not liquid. So, you will remember that a mineral is a naturally occurring, it is not man made, it is inorganic, it is not organic, it is crystalline, it is not amorphous and it is solid, it is not liquid. Minerals have definite chemical composition that can be represented by a chemical formula. Minerals do not have fixed chemical composition. We cannot say the quartz mineral has 100 percent SiO2. It can be much less than that. There are always impurities in a mineral, but these impurities are not the part of the mineral structure. Normally, most of the impurities can easily be removed from the mineral during processing. Some impurities are difficult to remove. Let us define a mineral. A rock, uh, let us define a rock. We have already defined a mineral. Now, let us define a rock. A rock is an aggregate of mineral. It is, it is an aggregate of one or more than one type of minerals. Rocks do not have chemical formula like minerals because they are composed of different type of minerals. So, one rock, sometime one rock dominantly made up of one mineral. When I say dominantly, maybe more than 90 percent. So, one example is limestone. Limestone rock is an aggregate of one mineral and that mineral is called calcite, calcium carbonate. However, there is always some percentage of other minerals too. So, such as dolomite, quartz, hematite, etcetera. So, we do not find, we never find pure minerals, there are always some impurities. Take another example of igneous rock, granite. Granite is a rock, it is an aggregate of many different minerals. Normally, a typical granite has 60 to 80 percent feldspar. 20 to 40 percent quartz and some percentages of dark and accessory minerals. Achieving different levels of purity for different industrial products. You should know that all the minerals has to be processed, has to be refined, has to be treated to remove the impurities, to increase the purity level. So, some industrial products need very highly pure minerals, some products need less pure minerals, some products need very, very, very high purity minerals. So, we have to process all our industrial minerals. So, quartz has formula SiO2 silica, but silica content of quartz can be 99 percent, 98 percent, 96 percent or even lower. The main reason is that there are impurities 
in form of other minerals in the crystal structure of quartz. These impurities are iron oxide, alumina, alumina that comes from the choline mineral inclusions, uh, potass and soda that comes from feldspar. So, you can see that a quartz mineral can have so many different impurities, so many different mineral inclusions which contribute to iron, alumina, potassium, uh, potass and soda. To achieve the required purity level, we can remove these minerals, we can remove these mineral inclusions, mineral impurities via processing. For some industrial uses such as silica sand for automotive glass, the maximum allowable limit of iron oxide is 0.02 percent. We can achieve this purity by removing excess iron oxide by processing. In solar glass manufacturing, we need to lower iron oxide down to 0.08 percent. That can be achieved by intensive processing. So just for your interest, we should discuss little bit about the conversion rates. Conversion 1 percent, when we say 1 percent, it is equal to 10,000 parts per million. 0 0.1 percent is equal to 1,000 parts per million. 0 0.01 percent means 100 parts per million. And 0 0.001 percent is 10 parts per million. 0 0.0001 percent means 1 part per million. Now, let's see this is very interesting, a mineral which is 99 percent pure still has 1 percent that is 10,000 parts per million impurities. So, it is not very pure, a mineral that is 99.9 percent pure still has 0 0.1 percent that is 1,000 parts per million impurities. So, it depends where we want to use them. Sometime this purity is enough, sometime we have to refine them more. A mineral based substance which is called solar silicon has 99.9999 percent silicon. On the other hand, the silicon which is used in the semiconductor products, they have 99s after 99. So, their purity is 99.9999999999 percent silicon. It will never reach to 100 percent. By intensive processing, you can add one more 9, but it will never be 100 percent. A single industrial mineral is used in a large number of commercial applications. Let us take an example of very common mineral limestone. What is the chemical composition of limestone? It is calcium carbonate. So, as I told you, a rock consists of minerals. So, this limestone consists of calcite mineral and calcite mineral has chemical composition calcium carbonate CaCO3. Limestone is a very common and cheap mineral commodity. Limestone is used mainly in making Portland cement for construction, also used in making the following products. Limestone can be converted into quick lime CaO for making mortar and cement and by adding water quick lime can be converted into hydrated lime. Limestone can be ground into fine particles and it is called ground calcium carbonate GCC powder. It is used as a filler in rubber, plastic, paint, ceramic, fiberglass, soil amendments, acid neutralization. Limestone can also be produced into very fine grain powder that is called precipitated calcium carbonate PCC. It is in micron size. It is used as a mineral filler and coating agent in paper, plastic, rubber, paint, paper coating, environmental use, pharmaceutical, animal feed, etcetera. So, this fine limestone, fine grain limestone precipitated calcium carbonate is used in our paper 
our good quality paper is filled with about 60 percent calcium carbonate and its outer surface of a very high quality paper its outer surface is coated with precipitated calcium carbonate or some other minerals example of some industries using industrial minerals. Now, first we have discussed a mineral which is used in different industries. Now, we will uh, discuss industries using different minerals. Construction industry, construction industry use cement and cement is made up of limestone, clay, gypsum and uh, some portion of hematite, some percentage of hematite. Ceramic tiles, Ceramic tiles are produced from mainly from feldspar, kaolin, silica sand, limestone, wall clay and sometimes some other additives like limestone, glass. Glass is mainly produced from silica sand, but we have to for lowering the melting point of silica sand we add either feldspar or naphthalene cyanide. Paint. Paint the clay, feldspar, limestone, talc, silica are these minerals are used in form of powder as a filler in paint. Sealant, silica products, silicones and we will have one separate lectures on silicones. Silicones are very important compounds and they are made up of silica, but they are used more than in more than 7000 industrial products. Waterproofing and weatherproofing materials are made up of silica, rubber and plastics, silica, silicones, precipitated silica, limestone, kaolin. Now, you can see here construction industry, which are buildings, they utilize cement, concrete, glass, ceramic, adhesive, sealants, waterproofing, and weatherproofing materials. All these products are made from industrial buildings. Automotive industry. There are so many different type of uh, glass in automotive in in a car. The windshield and the side windows glass. They all are uh, different quality. So glass, windscreen glass, other glasses, rubbers used in tires and other parts, plastic front part including steering, silicones used in sealant adhesives and paint. Mineral used in car includes silica, silica chemicals, precipitated silica, silicones, feldspar, calcium carbonate, kaolin and many other minerals. You can see here the steering and the front part they have these plastics and this is a, it is a special plastic and it use a mineral fillers so, uh, mostly limestone and silicones and there is a glass. So, automotive industry needs glass, plastic, rubber, sealant, adhesive and all these products are made from industrial minerals. Example of some industries using industrial minerals, tile industry, tile industry that is ceramics and porcelain tiles, natural stone tiles like marble, granite, engineered stone tiles that those are man made tiles. Uh, they are made from quartz powder or silica sand. They are very, very strong, durable, most aesthetic. You can make any design in them, but they are expensive. Silica based clay tiles, concrete tiles, lightweight tiles. A variety of industrial minerals are used in tile manufacturing. Ceramics and porcelain tiles basically produced from silica sand, kaolin, ball clay, feldspar, calcium carbonate, silicon, etcetera. You can see different tiles here. Example of some industries using industrial mineral that is let us discuss pharmaceutical industry. Ground calcium carbonate is used in many products we will discuss them one by one. Precipitated calcium carbonate is used, kaolin is used silica and silicones are used, precipitated silica is used in pharmaceutical. Limestone is a sedimentary rock that contains high levels of calcium carbonate from which we extract lime. So, from calcium carbonate we extract 
CaO which is called lime and from 100 percent pure calcium carbonate we can extract 56 percent CaO. Limestone is used as a source of supplemental calcium in chicken feed. It also contains trace elements of phosphorus, iron, magnesium and other nutrients. Chickens need calcium to produce strong eggshell. Limestone calcium carbonate in pharmaceutical. The main source of calcium carbonate is limestone. Its main use in the pharmaceutical industry is binding as a binder or providing whiteness and source of calcium. There are many drugs that are calcium carbonate as a key input. There are so many examples of those medicines and they are used in angina, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, prevention of cardiovascular diseases, coronary artery disease. So, these are some examples of medicines, pharmaceuticals made from calcium carbonate. Choline. Choline mineral, choline is made up of choline mineral. It is a clay. It, it is also used in pharmaceutical. Choline is an inexpensive clay mainly used in ceramics and porcelain. Choline consists of choline mineral. Choline has been used in a large number of pharmaceutical applications as an active ingredient. Choline exhibit excellent physical, chemical and surface physiochemical properties. In addition to the pharmaceutical uses, cholinite and its derivatives have been recently considered as a promising material in many biomedical innovation areas. Choline is most commonly used in for diarrhea. Choline clay is an adsorptive agent. It adsorbs water, toxins and bacteria and making the stool firm, reducing fluid loss from diarrhea. Choline clay is also used for swelling and sore inside the mouth to stop bleeding. Choline is sometimes applied to wounds to help stop bleeding. The toxic elements such as lead, cadmium, mercury and arsenic levels in food grade choline or pharmaceutical grade choline must not exceed the allowable limit. These are some examples of choline products. Examples of precipitated silica in food and feed industry. As I told you this is very interesting topic and there will be a one full discussion one day there will be a full discussion on precipitated silica, how it is made and how it is used, how it look like. Precipitated silica manufactured from silica sand via sodium silicate. So, first silica sand is converted into sodium silicate and sodium silicate is converted into precipitated silica. It is very fine grain, amorphous. Uh, I already told you that amorphous means non-crystalline. So, if you take a single grain of precipitated silica and you see under very high magnification microscope, uh, you will not see the crystal structure. So, the atoms inside that uh, molecule, it will be haphazardly distributed. It is adsorbent, gives fragrance, anti-blocking agent, free flow, it controls viscosity and add flavors. It is pesticide and animal feed carrier. It is used in ice cream, milkshake, powder products such as cappuccino, spices and seasoning, cake mix, dried soup, mixed beverages etc. There are many other minerals used as additive in food and feed. However, all those minerals require proper processing and removal of toxic elements. So, these are the different uses of uh, precipitated silica. There are domestic uses and there are commercial industrial uses as well. These are industrial uses. Uh, adding precipitated silica into rubber tires, uh, 
especially the precipitated silica is used in the winter tires and it gives the traction, it gives more mileage. Silica sand in poultry feed. Silica sand acts as a grinding aid inside chicken gizzard. It helps in digesting food. The sand grit is not digested and it is stored in the gizzard and eventually passed through. Sodium and calcium carbonate as feed additive. Sodium bentonite is a natural clay with high swelling properties. When mixed with water, it is perfectly suitable for livestock feed additive due to high water absorption. Cation exchange ability and cation exchange ability and ad adsorption of um, uh, mycotoxins. Adding bentonite in animal feed improves pellet quality prevents caking and flowability in livestock feed. That which is earth is another mineral or rather rock. It is used as animal feed. That which is earth or diatom is fossilized remain of diatoms. Diatoms are mono, uh, they, these are um, unicellular animals colonies lives in sea water. So, their hard parts are uh, made up of silica that is amorphous silica. After they die, they, uh, their shells are accumulated, they form uh, diatom, they form a rock which is called diatom. So, it is uh, diatom is fossilized remains and, and chemically they are organic and amorphous that is non crystalline silica. In its physical properties include uh, they are lightweight, they have high absorption, they have high brightness, they high surface area. You should know little bit about surface area. When we say surface area, the coarse minerals, the coarse grains has less surface area and the fine grains has more surface area. <clears throat> if you take a block of mineral and you cut it, after you cut it, you have new surfaces, new surfaces appear. If you cut it so many times or you break it, so many new surfaces will appear. So, if you take 1 gram powder of something like limestone and you spread it, which is not possible, but imagine that if you can spread it one grain beside another grain, it will cover several meters of on the ground, one gram only. And very, very fine grain material, they cover twenties of or even fifty and hundreds of meters on the ground. So, finer the material, greater the surface area is. <coughs> they, uh, they are abrasive, the abrasiveness means that uh, uh, they, their surfaces are hard, they are natural silica, it is not man made, high porosity, they have insulation property, they are fine grain. Diatomaceous earth provides anti caking and improves flowability and mixability of animal, of animal feed. In a silo, wet grains, corn and other feed materials stick together and make lumps. Adding diatom help to dry it out and keep it from sticking. Thank you very much.